<laughs> it's peeing down. Morning everybody. Busy day today. I've got loads of office work to do today. I've got loads of editing to do. I've got to do some number reviews as well from some new product. I'll go to the bank. Today's swing is someone who struggles with hooking the golf ball, so we're going to help this guy. This came from Twitter, I think, this picture or this video. So make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. That's where I will be pulling these swings from, as well as from my golf app. <laughs> Hoodie's still up? Always. Gotta stay cosy, ain't ya? Yes. I phoned to talk about America. Alright. So let's look at today's golf swing. Lots of decent movements in here. He looks athletic. He looks like he could hit the ball good distance. He talks about overturning shots, so overdrawing and hooking stuff, which is why he sent the swing. Um, and it looks very much a grip based idea. So even from this kind of grainy image, what you're gonna have to do, if we take you back here what we're going to see it's very blurry here but that club already looks like it's starting to want to turn very much down to the ground which is fine as long as you deal with it and it's how you deal with it is going to be the question um, that i pose to you today to practice so if we take you up to the top of your back swing we see a face that is slightly twisted say in relationship to your lead arm your left arm while at the same time we see a cupping in the left hand that only comes from a strong grip so if a grip is too far over what happens is you can get the face twisted and still have cups so for me with a neutral um, grip if I flatten my wrist that club gets to about that position see what I mean if I have a I for me to cup the wrist that way at the top my face would be pointing more in a more lofted twisted more in a more lofted way at the top of the back so point more down at the ground um, then what we see as we come down in to hit the ball is we see a very high handle and that's how you're trying to deal with the face pointing a little bit too far left of the path. You're trying to deal with the high handle issue. So I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about maybe changing your grip or other ways to deal with that grip rather than having to push the handle way up in the air. So I've just filmed some data analysis, great ones with SLDR which I can't wait for coming out very soon. Now I've got to do some serious editing and then I'm heading out. I want to get away from my screens a little bit. I have just had my soup lunch and now it's time. Is it just me? I've still got loads of Christmas sweets left. So let's start by talking about your grip. Hard to see on this image, obviously, that you've sent me if it is a twisted grip, but I'm, I know it is. Um, what you need to do is look down at your left hand. I reckon you're seeing four knuckles. I want you to try and see three, maybe even two and a half with the right hand sitting more on top of the club rather than underneath so much. So what happens with your grip? You twist it round to where I look down to my right. That turns the face this way that we've seen in the swing. So you then start changing lie and handle going maybe forwards from impact to try and compensate for that twist that you're putting in. And you don't win the game all the time. Sometimes you don't put your handle high enough or put your handle forward enough and that face is too close to the path and you overdraw it. So, different grip. Two knuckles, two, two to two and a half knuckles on your left hand, right hand more on top. Now, this won't make you play better golf, it'll make you play worse golf unless you do these things as well because if I change that, ha uh, that grip and then still deliver the handle high and push it forward, face is going to be now right of a path which looks like it's going right, you're going to hit block cuts, you're going to hit worse shots. So if you change the grip, so if you have a good change of the grip, and I know some people don't like to do that and that's going to be the second part of your tip today which we'll do later. So if you do change the grip, two knuckles looking down to two and a half on your left hand, right hand more on top, you're going to have to feel like you're swinging more left as you hit the ball. So not so far from the inside. You're also going to need to feel like the head of the club catches up with your hands at impact, which will feel on the downswing like you're trying to chuck those angles away and almost feel like you're flicking it forward through impact because what happens now, you are not got that twist in, so you don't need this massive handle drag and high handle delivery. So if we just change that grip, like say face a point more right with your path to right isn't going to work. 
you're going to have to do those three things. Change the grip, feel like you're swinging left, and feel like you're flicking that club forward, getting it to catch up with the handle at impact. And that will make you hit very different shots. Let's answer your questions. Morning, bro. Morning. Taking the whole thing to school. Hello, Sorry. eldest. Just a quick question. How often do you think you should change your clubs, specifically your irons? Thanks, bro. No problem, bro. As often as you feel you should. So there's two ways to think about this, and I think people get a bit confused with this, certainly when they look at maybe people like myself. I get a lot of clubs come through my possession every month. So it's very easy for me to change, to try a new feel, to, I mean, it's kind of my job. I, I'm here and I'm testing iron, so iron's come through me. So it's very easy for me to just sit in this office and think, well, that looks nice, I'm gonna give that a go today. Mm. Feels nice. I played, oh, stop it, that is nice, I could gain that. Obviously, when you start putting pound figures on these uh, changes, it makes it very different, doesn't it? Because it's not as accessible, so what will happen is you'll tend to desire stuff, which makes you might want to change. There's no reason to change your irons apart from you're looking for something extra or different. So I like to sometimes just see something. I've got something in my head and I want to imagine that feeling and that iron that I put down on the ground makes me feel that. I think so many people are looking for when should I do this? How should I do that answer? And hopefully you're learning as I make more of these videos. Golf isn't about that. It's such a personal thing. And so much of this is controlled where unfortunately it's all about what you put into it. I'm changing clubs for looks, feels, sounds. So you should be changing as much as you feel right. And that's the key. It's about what you feel. Hello bro. I'm stuck in a traffic jam waiting to go to golf. Gonna miss out on a bit of a warm up. Any suggestions, man? Cheers. Cheers, bro. Apart from leaving a little earlier, when I'm testing clubs, I warm up in a more physical way. So I do star jumps, high kicks. I do gentle jogging backwards and forwards, jumping on the spot. I actually don't do golf swinging of your club much. I get my body all over warm. Um, when you just swing the club around, you're basically starting to pull on things as force is pulling on you. I find it much better doing kind of circular arms backwards and forwards, star jumps, those kind of things. Loads better, and then a few putts and off you go, bruh. Gotta go to the bank. This could be fun. Right, tip number two, if you want to keep your grip where it is, and there's loads of world-class players who grip it that way, but they often choose to play it more this way. So I've got my hands up against my banister rail here, and what you would be doing with your twisted grip is you would be coming in to hit and coming almost over the banister and then around, which is where this overdraw comes from, this desire to stand that shaft up and then rotate it. That's all happening on the downswing, so it's not all just happening at the bottom, it's a process as you start down. But what I would do if I had to play golf with your grip is I would choose to do this. I would aim a little bit left, I would open up my stance, I would know my face has a tendency to want to point a bit left, so I'd try and get my path to go a fraction left of it. And the way I would do that is by feeling like I'm swinging around to the left, which is where my feet are going, while at the same time feeling like I'm delivering under this banister. Get away from this feeling of going over. Um, what this will do for you, if you get a feeling of this, your body will feel like it's turning more, and if you can take this out onto the range, this feeling, it'll be reminiscent, I think, depending on how you pitch, of what you might feel like when you pitch the ball. Lots of people, when they pitch the ball, are doing it this way with bigger body rotations. It will be a very different feeling. It will get rid of the overturns, because in effect, you're in a feeling kind of holding that left wrist in its cut position through impact without standing that club up. But this way is kind of almost more your Zach Johnson way of hitting that ball, rather than this kind of standing that shaft up and letting it roll down at the bottom, which is getting you to hit that overdraw. Now, when I mean roll, I don't mean at the bottom, you're just doing this. That's a process of your whole downswing, that kind of turning which comes out at the bottom. You can't influence it down there, you need to be influencing it all the way down. Great drill. 
feel like you're starting just under the banister, turning under it to get your hands coming back underneath it, and then through. It'll be a very different feeling. Hello. 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 Hi. I just got oh. a hat trick. Oh, yes, Blue. Where are we going for tea? Pizza Hut. There we go, thanks for watching, see you again on Monday, don't forget to follow Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to this channel, loads of daily vlogs coming next week, Monday to Friday, keep your questions coming though, if you've got a video question over the weekend, just post it on Twitter, I'll try and get you on the next show. Alright. Right, are we going guys? <laughs> nope.